we're going to use Excel to adjust differential equation parameters to fit data. So commonly we have a model. Uh, we might have a model of a system that might be something like an ordinary differential equation. And then we also collect some data. Uh, you know, this might be our data where we have, you know, at a particular time we collect, uh, you know, the Y value, the response, and, uh, you know, this table of data uh, versus our model predictions. This might be our data, and this is our model, and those may not agree. And so we want to be able to calculate some of the parameters uh, in our differential equation so that, uh, the model and data are in alignment. So um, this equation right here that I've given is the solution to a very common differential equation. We call it a first order plus dead time. And that it, uh, the original differential equation is uh, here. And I'll put, uh, normally we have a gain here times u of t minus to p, but what we're going to do is just assume that this gain is 1, and we're just going to fit uh, two parameters, this tau value and this theta parameter right there. Okay, and when you uh, solve it for a, um, a step response, um, when the u value goes from, you know, 0 to 1, okay, we have a step function right here. I could have written this as um, of u of, of t minus theta right here instead. Uh, that would be our input, it would be u. Uh, but it's a step function that goes from 0 to 1 after um, a period of time theta. Okay, so we wait. That's our delay is theta. And then our tau value, we call that our time constant. Okay, so that's just a little bit of background on this differential equation. So if you don't uh, remember differential equations, that's fine. We're just gonna be fitting uh, this function right here to that data. Okay, we're gonna need to use uh, Excel. We'll use Excel for this one, although we can use other tools as well. Um, but let's just go ahead and use Excel for this one uh, and uh, show this. Okay, so we have Excel, go ahead and open it up and create a new blank workbook and I'll zoom in a little bit so we can see uh, a little bit better okay so what I'll do first of all is just come up with guess values for my tau value and I'll just say that's 0 0.5 and then also my theta value as well and I'll say that's 1 okay so just some guesses um, and uh, then what I need to do is um, get this data over here. So I had this data for, um, uh, and, and you can just type this in. Um, it's only a few values here. Um, let me just so I can see if I can copy this in, speed it up just a little bit. Okay, so here's the data right here. And I'm just going to copy this, see if it'll paste into my Excel document. Okay, there it is. So I have my time and my y values, my response. And now, um, along with my, uh, this is my measured, these are my measured values, and then I'll also have my predicted as well. Um, and those are going to be according to the equation that you see uh, right here. Okay, so. Let's go ahead and first of all just um, uh, do a couple precursor things. Um, we need our step function in there. We need to uh, say that's going to be 0 or 1 depending on our theta value. So it's going to be 0 right now until uh, time 1. Okay, And there's a little hint down here on how to use an if statement to um, implement that. Okay, uh, you'll need to use an if statement. So if, um, so we'll do if, all right. So this one, I'm, I have different uh, references here, but I'm just gonna do if uh, 
let's see, this number time, A6, is less than my theta value. Now hit F4 at this point to put, uh, make that a static reference. Then it's going to be equal to zero, else it's going to be equal to one. Okay, so the, here's I, my step function, S of T minus uh, theta. And if I just fill this one down, it's going to turn to a one after that delay of one. So if I change this uh, delay, let's say to 0 0.25, then I'm going to have ones until uh, you know, 0.3, uh, 0 0.25 right in between these two is where you turn from a zero to a one. Okay, so you just need this if statement uh, right there in order to be able to uh, calculate this uh, zero or one. Okay, um, let's see. Now, um, there's something else we need to do. Um, let's go ahead and just do a, a, a y. Uh, let's just go ahead and calculate this. Um, I might be missing something else, but um, let's just go for it. Okay, so uh, I have equal to five. That's gonna be our our gain, our KP value there. Um, but we just uh, put that as five, one minus EXP. Um, okay, now I'm gonna need some inside parentheses here. I have my time minus uh, theta. Okay, hit F4 just to make that static. And then divided by my tau value and hit F4 to make that one static as well. And be careful with these parentheses right here. Um, and then I'm going to do times uh, D6. And you really can't see that, uh, but it's just the one to the right of it. Okay, so that's gonna be zero until after the time delay. And then it's going to then turn on to a particular value, okay? So now if I didn't multiply by that, you'll see, um, what that does later, but essentially now what I want to do is try to make these two match up. Okay, and what I'm going to do is just change my tau value. Okay, and I can do this manually, just guess and check. Um, you know, until it got to the point where I was uh, in agreement on these two. So let's go ahead and plot these just so we can see it a little bit better. And I'll do insert. And let's do a scatter chart. Okay, so there's the measured versus the predicted. Okay, and as I change these values, let's say I, I reduced uh, the theta to 0 0.2. Okay, and then increase the tau to 3 or decrease it to 0 0.5. Okay, okay, so I can get closer and closer you know, with this solution to the differential equation. But let's say we want to use a solver to help us minimize a sum of squared errors between the two. What we can do is um, we can create a new column. Okay, so this is a squared error, for example. Uh, and what we're going to do is just take uh, this predicted value minus the measured value and we'll square it. Okay, so this is our squared error column and uh, then we sum up the sum of the square errors uh, or sum of squared errors and then we'll just do sum equal sum and then hit control shift and down after you've selected E6 and then close parenthesis. Okay so that's the value that we're tr going to try to minimize. We can continue guessing and checking until that value got to a minimum. Uh, you know, or we could come into data and use solver. If you don't have that, go to file, options, um, go down to add-ins, and uh, select this Excel add-ins, go. Make sure that's selected for the solver add-in. A lot of times by default, it isn't there. And I get a lot of questions on, you know, where that is. Okay, so make sure you select solver, and then we're gonna try to minimize. We're gonna select our objective, which is gonna be E2 and uh, we're going to minimize uh, E2 by changing uh, the cells tau and theta. Okay, and uh, let's go ahead and make the unconstrained variables non-negative. They both need to be positive, and we'll click Solve. 
Okay, so we got a pretty close solution there. There's a little bit of noise, a little bit of variation in the data, but we got pretty close with these parameters right here to fit our system. Okay, so a couple other things that we need to do uh, with this are, um, you know, let's go ahead and, uh, and, okay, so we made the charts as points and fit as a line, okay, maybe change this one, this little dip down here is just this polynomial extrapolation, um, okay, so I'm going to change, uh, hmm, let's see, data labels, format data series, and let's see if we've got some series options here. Um, line, no line, for example, on that one, just the points. Okay, and, but you could change the marker, for example, uh, to something else. Uh, you know, let's see. All right, so there's a bunch of options there that you can change for that. Um, let's make this blue one. Um, See if we can select that. Oh, it's kind of hard to select these sometimes. Sometimes it selects points, sometimes it selects. So sometimes you just have to come in here and, uh, you know, it's hard to select it when they're right on top of each other. There it goes, I got it. Um, and so let's just format the data series and maybe make this one into, for our line, uh, you know, maybe we'll do a, uh, a dash type, we'll put a dash there, something like that. Okay, um, I think there's some other options if you just want to make it into a, a line, but I'm not, in, versus this curved polynomial mesh that goes in between them, but I'm not seeing those right now. Okay, so there's our, uh, there's our measured and predicted. I think I got those opposite, the measured is supposed to be points and the predicted is supposed to be the line, but anyway, you can you can figure that out. We want to calculate now an R squared value of the fit. And to do that, um, let's just do R squared. And uh, that's going to be equal to RSQ. And then I just need to do um, one column, comma, the other column. It doesn't matter which one you do, it's going to give you the same answer. Uh, it, depending on the order that you put in, it'll give you the same result. So this is our R squared value. Uh, that's a common measure of how well we fit. Uh, closer to one means generally a better fit. We could use this as our objective function as well uh, to you know change these to maximize r squared or try to get it as close as we could to one. But we use the sum of squared errors instead. Okay, so there's our r squared value for the fit, and then uh, we could also add, uh, for example, a trend line. Um, you know, if we wanted to, to this, uh, you know, to the blue one, we could for add trend line right here instead of format data series, just go add trend line. We could also just say, well, we don't really know what um, expression is going to be needed here. So maybe just use a polynomial. Okay, and uh, if I bring that over here. Okay, so here's a second order polynomial. Um, you know, if I change this to a third order, um, you know, you're going to see this thing update. And then you can kind of pick, uh, you know, the one that you want. Um, and you could come up to, for example, a sixth order polynomial. And let's see if I, I can display the equation on the chart and display the R squared on the chart as well. And it'll show that to you. You know, this one it would be if you don't really know um, the correlation that you want to use, uh, you just want to come up with like a polynomial expression that fits your approximates your solution y of t. Okay, so we used a differential equation, analytic solution with some unknown parameters, but this would be more of an empirical approach to fitting. Uh, to fitting that data. Okay, so let's go back and just review what we've done. We um, find the con found the constants uh, tau and and uh, theta in the equation. This equation right here, where we had a step function zero or one, uh, depending on uh, if time was less than theta or greater than theta. Um, we uh, Optimize by minimizing a sum of squared errors. We made a chart, okay, and you'll just need to format that 
Um, and then uh, R squared value, we just did the RSQ function. And then we use Excel's trend line feature just with a polynomial fit. So this would be like our empirical approach to data regression. This would be a semi-empirical approach here where we just have some unknown parameters that we're trying to adjust, but it's uh, largely given by this um, structure. Okay, we had to use an if statement um, to implement this one right here and to be able to fit our y predicted values, okay, make these two uh, match up right here.